So we okay. are back to Bible study. It is Wednesday, friends. It is at noon, and it's Bible reflection time. This uh, program, this study, comes from Berea United Methodist Church. We are located in Berea, Kentucky, mm -hmm. uh, about half an hour further south from Lexington, Kentucky, which is just a hair bigger place than we are. <laughs> just a little bit. And we are located right at uh, I-75. Uh, so good location. Uh, hometown for Veria uh, College, well-known college, mm -hmm. uh, good, good, good school, and uh, many other good things here going on in Veria, Kentucky, including this church. Mm -hmm. My name is Pastor Timo Carbonen. I probably already told that. And then my colleague here is uh, Assistant Pastor Mary Miller. Good afternoon. We are here with you to go ahead and start working again or continue our work on Apostle Paul's letter to Romans. Uh, this is an uh, interesting journey, Mary, that mm -hmm. we are Yes, it making. is. Yeah. It is, and this chapter has a lot of, um, kind of a lot of key verses that we oftentimes pull out and, and highlight, so it, it'll yes. be good to get the whole, the whole chapter in context today. This is why I feel reason that we, we better say a prayer before we start mm -hmm. working on, especially on this fifth chapter, uh, which is uh, a wonderful, uh, lacking for better word, uh, wonderful, deep, uh, just very, very big blessing to read these mm -hmm. chapters and verses. So let's please join with me in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, on this sunny day, we ask in your presence for this moment of study, this Bible reflection time, this, this divine appointment with you, God, uh, with your word, and inspired by your Holy Spirit, help us to see Jesus and help us to hear his word, his word. And Lord, we are so thankful that you bless everyone who is out there with us today, everyone who will be with us right at this moment and then later on YouTube. Lord, we pray uh, also uh, healing. We ask healing for those who are ill. May they feel your presence as truly as you are with us today. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Amen. Okay, this is Apostle Paul's letter to Romans, and we are about to start our working on our fifth chapter. Mm -hmm. Uh, remember, uh, Apostle Paul wrote this letter from Corinth around 57 under Domino. This was uh, going to be his introduction about something that he feel uh, that God has laid on his heart to share with the church in Rome. Mm -hmm. Now, Roman church obviously was fairly young, like all the Christian churches out there at that time. Most of their members has been witnessing uh, the day of Pentecost, uh, and great number of members there were Jews, mm -hmm. also a big number of Gentiles. So it was a combination of, 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 of the people from different backgrounds mm -hmm. coming to the church. Obviously, considering the local and central location of, of Rome at that time, we have reason to believe that in that church there were lots of uh, prominent people as well, people with great influence and and who uh, who uh, have decided to become a follower of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, also, Mary, in this uh, fifth chapter, there is a uh, <clears throat> so-called maybe a key verse, one of the key verses of of the whole letter, which is the first uh, verse here in the fifth chapter. Mm -hmm. As Paul says, that therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we will get back on that um, again and again in this letter, because this letter is about faith that will justify uh, us uh, if our faith is uh, anchored to Jesus Christ, our Savior. So we are going to start working on this fifth chapter. I'm going to ask Mary to go ahead and start reading. 
One thing I keep on reminding every time when we are dealing with the, <clears throat> I was supposed letter to Romans, people out there, uh, read your Romans good, mm -hmm. read it well. It is uh, good for you to get the main concept of mm -hmm. God's grace mm -hmm. and justification by faith and faith only in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, so many people, and it is not Mary, uh, even it sounds like a plain, clear concept, mm -hmm. but uh, truthfully saying that we all have been and we are struggling once in a while with that concept of free grace and justification, justification by faith, mm -hmm. uh, uh, all uh, only by faith uh, in faith in Jesus Christ. But <clears throat> uh, this is now the book to read to get clear with us, with that. So Mary, could you please start reading? And let's do uh, short little portions at mm -hmm. a time, I think. Uh, maybe five, six verses. Uh, maybe six first verses, okay. if you don't mind. All right. <clears throat> and one thing we've mentioned other weeks, I don't remember if you've mentioned it this week or not, but that um, Paul has never been to the yeah. church in Rome. He's writing no. to them before he's met them face to face. Yeah, that's, this was kind of his a, um, introduction. Yes. Mm -hmm. to people. All right. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation and this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love when we were utterly helpless Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners all right thank you mm -hmm. you feel when you are reading this uh, that you kind of need to pause at every word mm -hmm. yeah. and reread it and think about it and the more you read it the more you think about it prayerfully the more it blesses you the more it blesses you beginning with the first verse like I said one of the key verses of the entire letter mm -hmm. Paul writing therefore since we have been made right in God's in God's sight by faith so we have been we have been made right in God's sight by faith. In the eyes of God, we have been made the right by faith. By faith, by faith. Not by doing something or believing something, but by faith. We have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Mm -hmm. So by faith, we are connecting with Jesus and, and God sees us as the righteous ones. In his eyes, we have been because we have been made right mm -hmm. in God's eyes, in God's sight by faith. We have been made right. So uh, that's a big word, consisting, considering that what all can be going on in human life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what all can be wrong yeah. Yeah. in our lives. Just, just being honest, what all can be wrong, my friend, what all can be wrong in your life. But all can be wrong in my life and in our life. Uh, when we come to God uh, through Jesus, in faith in Jesus, uh, the Bible says uh, that we have been, because of that, we have been made right mm -hmm. in God's sight mm -hmm. by faith in Jesus Christ. Now, that is a uh, very, very profound very foundational statement about free grace mm -hmm. by faith. Okay, uh, there's always temptation I start preaching because I've been doing it quite some time. Mm -hmm. But I try to be a teacher today more than preacher. 
Uh, I think it is impossible, but anyway, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying anyway. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Oh, they can be both, preacher and teacher. That's for sure. That, that, that works too. Okay, um, then the second verse, not rereading, or re, uh, re, uh, yeah, rereading what already was read, but uh, because of our faith, going back to this faith issue, again and again and again, Christ has brought us into the place, into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. So, and we confidently, we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. So, not just that we've been made right in God's sight, but we have been brought into this place of undeserved privilege. Undeserved privilege. Well, yeah. If anything else, and if anything is undeserved in this world, it is. It is that we have been made right in God's eyes right. through our faith. It's only by grace. Yes. Only by grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, only by grace. So there's there's nothing else there to make that happen. Uh, and then we are not just there somehow, but we are. We are standing, now we stand on it. We, we can be confident mm -hmm. and, and we can be assured and certain what all are the key words here to use anyway so that you not just feel okay, but you have been made okay. That's right. That's, right. that's a big difference for it is. sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very common thing that people um, struggle with is yeah. um, how can I know that my relationship with Jesus is okay. Um, mm -hmm. How can I know that I'm in good standing with God? Mm -hmm. um, and some people would even say that they that there's no way to know. Yeah. But Romans especially, um, especially yes. this passage here, mm -hmm. um, says you can you can be yeah. confident, yeah. not because of anything you've done, yeah. not because of anything I've done, but because mm -hmm. of what Jesus has done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. We think that we need to work for it. We think yeah. that we need to yeah. be good enough or, or whatever. But it is to all, make it happen. all um, because of what Jesus has done. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Now, going back to, Mary, what you said, uh, um, even part of Christianity, um, I think we should be talking about a doctrine within our Christian uh, churches and Christianity is that there's no way of knowing. You can't be certain about your salvation. There's no way of knowing uh, in this world whether you have been saved or not. Mm -hmm. There's no guarantee. So we need to be kind of beggars all the way through our life and remain uncertain whether we have been accepted or not. So uh, it will work out, it will be, we will see, we will figure it out mm -hmm. one day as we have passed this life and we have moved on into eternity. But this is not what Paul is saying here. Yeah, yeah. He was talking about being confident and certain. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if we have this faith that is a gift from God, uh, that will make us righteous before God, and by this gift that we have been given, we 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 are ac accessing, we are connecting with God. Mm -hmm. So that is all credit uh, to us as as we have been made righteous. So this is a very very important thing now what we are trying to mm -hmm. trying to talk here about. So that being being justified, justified by faith, and through faith all alone. And then Paul keep on saying that we can rejoice too when we run into problems. Now, it seems like he's preaching to us now. Yes, yeah. Keep your, my friend, your heart and your ears open because Paul is preaching to us. And this is what makes people cross, uh, Cross, cross, uh, what is the key word? Centurial, center, cross-centric. Mm -hmm. 
cross centuries, oh. crossing centuries okay. and eras and times. Oh, okay. So it is not so. written just even Paul was writing to a uh, playing working on my English language. Even Paul was writing to a church in Rome, but we better believe that he's writing to us as well. Yes, yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. the message was not just uh, for a one certain time and one certain uh, number of people, mm -hmm. but the Bible is uh, uh, through uh, relevant through generations, I guess right. that's the way to say right. it. Right, right. Uh, so, uh, just what, as relevant today as it was when he first wrote it. Yeah, yes. that's mm -hmm. the. Yeah, I try to say it a little bit too complicated, Mary. So that's <laughs> okay. that's my that's my fault. That's my that's me many times. But, okay, uh, now the third verse here. I want us to really kind of pause here as well because I think that Paul is really talking talking to us. Uh, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. I think we have experienced that some uh, nationally and here in community and then worldwide, mm -hmm. talking about dealing with this uh, awful pandemic. For we know that they help us to develop endurance, okay? So there's something good about mm -hmm. this. They mm -hmm. will help these trials and troubles and that we are, we are dealing with can help us to uh, to develop endurance, okay? And then it goes on. It's like a, it's like a, how do you say that effect that uh, that one thing is affecting like dom dominoes. Do okay. Dominoes, yeah. yes. Yeah. One thing is affecting another, and endurance develops uh, strength, okay? Of character. Strength of character. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And character strengthens our confidence. Hope of salvation. So it feels to me that Paul said, yeah, um, I don't wish these trials to you, but mm -hmm. if you are right there, uh, it is not really all that bad. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't say if you run into troubles and problems, trials and pro tr problems and trials. It says when, when yeah, we run when, into it. As we and are. that's just because that's, that's what reality. life has. Yeah, it's yeah. reality. Yeah. Um, that is reality, and uh, if you say something uh, different, uh, my friend, that no, 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 you, if you just have faith, you don't have these trials, you don't have these troubles, you are trouble-free person all your life, then I'm going to ask you to go back and read your Bible again, and again, and again, because right. that's not just the way it is. That unfortunately is, mm. a, is a fairly, um, fairly common teaching, uh, yeah. that, you know, if you, if you follow Jesus, then None of these hardships will come. Yeah. He will protect you from them. And that isn't what Scripture says. No, it, it is not really. Yeah. He says he'll be with us through them. Yes. With a big difference right there. It's a big difference. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is saying that you are in this world, but you are not from this world. Mm -hmm. And what is in this world? Lots of... Lots of troubles. Lots of troubles. Yeah. And trials and issues for us to deal with. See, sometimes you feel it once you were able to... Uh, deal with one and you feel start feeling pretty good about it then the other one is waiting for you and that's just the way it is so that's why we need need God's presence that's why we need this teaching today coming to our way and it's really why we need the church too mm -hmm. the body of Christ yeah to help uh, carry us through those mm -hmm. troubled times mm -hmm. yes that's where the church comes into very important uh, that's where the church comes into picture and mm -hmm. by helping us and supporting us. By the way, I'm writing uh, pastor's letters uh, like you church family know uh, twice a week and I feel that is least I need to be doing. Uh, let me rephrase it. I feel that that is one thing I can be doing under these circumstances mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because there's not really a personal visits allowed and you don't want to just go out visiting, but you need to be connecting with people. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to um, uh, make some little bit revised plans for us to to stimulate our prayer life, uh, talking about praying for one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what we are talking. When we are dealing with these trials and, 
and struggles and illnesses and all that. So prayers of your church family is critically important. Mm -hmm. uh, so then you know that there is one person praying for you, which is Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. As a, as a, a head priest of, of, of the church. And then you have your church family. Then you have your pastoral staff praying for you. But then you have your church family praying mm -hmm. for you. So that makes a big difference. So, yeah, it seems like uh, endurance, uh, strength, confidence, and hope when we have Christ mm -hmm. and we have faith in him. That is what is going to be given to us. Mm -hmm. Endurance, mm -hmm. confidence, uh, confidence, and, and, and strength. I miss the strength. And then hope. And this all comes along. Uh, as you are uh, connecting with, with the Lord with faith. And this hope will not lead you lead to disappointment. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. In this very disappointing world. So if you have hope, it doesn't lead you to disappointment. Hope, so, hope in Christ. Hope yes. in Christ, yes. Mm -hmm. Not just a hope I'm squeezing somehow out of m myself, but... Mm -hmm. This hope of Christ, of eternal life, and all that he can bring to us, his presence, his love, his power, his strength, his mercy and grace, uh, that doesn't disappoint us. That doesn't disappoint us. That doesn't lead you to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Mm -hmm. And, and again, this is, this is a um, big word as well. And we can go back, back on this later when Paul talks about salvation. But who all was involved in our salvation when, when, when our salvation was planned? Who all was involved? No, I wasn't there. You were not there. But there's God the Father and the God the Son and the God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Trinity was involved, and all these three persons were involved. Mm -hmm. But these are just the very uplifting words, Mary. Yes, yes. These are truly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you notice, that Paul is not only talking about our salvation and foundational things about salvation, but also how God makes through Jesus uh, our sal salvation real and everyday thing. Mm -hmm and reality, great reality, becoming great reality of our life. Mm -hmm. So beautiful words. Yes. Okay, let's move on, and we are now about to start working on the sixth verse, friends. Let's keep this. I feel that we have to kind of take this treatment in a, in a pretty small portion mm -hmm. at a time. Now, uh, what about 6 to 11th verse? Here? All right. Start, we'll start with 6 again. Yes. When we were utterly helpless... Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, although someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who's especially good. But God showed us his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Yeah, these are deep words, friends, again. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul beginning that when we were weak, and we were helpless because we could not do nothing about saving ourselves. Right. That is the reality. And even you, with you, my friend, uh, despite of how, what you feel about yourself today, uh, but there's one thing you cannot do. You cannot save yourself. You can probably be a decent person and try to make things right, but you can't save yourself. You can't save your soul. 
and you can save your life after all. So someone had to come to rescue us. This is what Paul is saying, Mary. Mm -hmm. Someone had to come to rescue us outside of me and outside of you, outside of anybody that we know. Somebody had to come outside. So then Paul says that Christ came at, at exactly the right time right time in history and according to God's own schedule. And this gives us a reason, Mary, to believe that um, God's timing is always right timing mm -hmm. when it comes to other matters as well. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, uh, the main matter, matter was that was our need for salvation that God mm -hmm. came at the right time in the right place of history. And God worked out plan for our salvation mm -hmm. uh, through Jesus, our Savior. So, um, and it was through, through his great love. Uh, uh, verse 8 says from a friend, uh, it says, by God sowed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. We're still sinners. Mm -hmm. Right, and the, the contrast that he's making in verse 7, saying, well, most people would not be willing to die for, for an upright person, though some might perhaps be willing to die for a person who's especially good. But God showed his great love when we were sinners, when we weren't good people. Yeah. Um, so that's the contrast he's trying to create there um, of how uh, God's love um, looks beyond our, our sin and um, and provides for us to be made right with him. So, Very, very important word here, and you are right, Mary, uh, while we were yet uh, sinners. And, and these are amazing words to me mm -hmm. because a, um, it means that God loved us even before we turned to him, mm -hmm. even before we knew any, anything about him. And in the Wesleyan tradition, Methodist tradition, <clears throat> we call that stage for us as we start evaluating our life prior Christ. And then we, we are looking our life now uh, uh, as, as somebody who's been made new through Christ. And then we start looking our life back and said, wow, there I was wandering around. Mm -hmm. And without knowing God at all, had heard bits and pieces, but I really didn't know him. But now you can see that there was his, his love was there already for us mm -hmm. as he was wooing us. And we call it prevenient grace, prevenient. Mm -hmm. grace that goes before us, goes before us without, without us knowing anything about it. Mm -hmm. Little matters here and there when you start looking your life back uh, people you met, books you read, mm -hmm. somebody's prayers for you, yes. mm -hmm. and, and things start happening. Stink start, uh, stink, uh, things start started happening to you. Mm -hmm. And that is what we call God's prevenient grace. When God was trying to pull you in right. and bring you in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and doing something before you knew. And that, that I, I think this is one of the most beautiful ways to, mm -hmm. of course it is, because the Bible, why we were still sinners. We were still sinners without knowing God. There was already, all, already love, existing love. And then this love thing here is big, okay, verse uh, nine. Uh, and you can't overdo it, really you can't. Uh, what God love, God's love means uh, mm -hmm. uh, all the way through uh, the salvation. Uh, it, it, is just, uh, it is just the key and foundation of all that God is doing to us based on his love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not easy lesson. Now we could, I mean, it'd be another whole lesson, but um, how... how the whole understanding of why it needed to be the blood of Christ that that made us right with God is connected to all the Old Testament um, mm. uh, sacrifices and 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 how they were 
used to be made right, but they weren't, um, they weren't, they weren't once and for all. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so in the in the law, they were given a lot of times where they were supposed to sacrifice rams for this, or, or sacrifice birds for or doves for different things. So there's all of this stuff in the Old Testament, but um, I, it used to be that I didn't know really what to do with that. Mm -hmm. But um, I think I'm starting to understand how that um, the law helped us to be prepared for the great gift of Jesus on the cross being once and for all the sacrifice mm -hmm. instead of having to do um, over and over and over again. Is that making sense? Yeah, it making sense. It's, it's a big topic. It's a big, um, it's a big thing to think about. But Yeah, it's true. Um, it is. But I think when, when people start reading scripture um, and they don't, um, they, they see this phrase over and over again by the blood of Christ, there's some question as to, you know, why is it always talking about the blood of Christ? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that um, is a big question, and there's big big answers. For yeah, it. big question and, and so, big answers, yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. Now, all these uh, ceremonial uh, sacraments that was made in the Old Testament was like a Bible says in the book of Hebrews that it was like a pale shadow of something that was yet to come. Oh, yeah, pale yeah. shadow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm something there was a message and there was an offer mm -hmm. and there is a, a chance uh, to please god all through all days but then when christ finished it up for us mm -hmm. and took all on himself and became a god's uh, main sacrifice for all our sins, for all of our sins. yes mm -hmm. so um uh, it, it is amazing thing, and and the and the book that in the New Testament side that really answers to many of these questions and how how Christ was the full fulfillment of all the sacrifices is the book of Hebrews to yeah. me. Yeah. That is where it comes very clear to you. That may be the next book we we study. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe we just call call one uh, letter after another after Romans and we go to book of uh, letter of, to Corinthians but we are not even close no, there we're not yet. Even close we, we are yet. far <laughs> away from okay. there now <clears throat> then in this these two verses here talking about how Christ uh, Mary took all our sins on him for since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. Okay? So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. So you know, just somebody who knows God, but... Uh, Christ has made us friend of yeah, God. Yeah. So friend is uh, uh, much more than somebody who knows mm -hmm. knows me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a friend. Friend is something very close. Yeah. Yeah. Friend is something very close. So that's uh, that's because of Christ. Right. These are um, deep words, and and wonderful message for us to read again today mm -hmm. and every day what God has how God has restored our life uh, by dying in our place because the penalty of sins is dead friends I have introduced to you one time let's take a little break here Mary okay um, no this is not break really but break from the from the narrative but this is clearly part of what, I, what we are trying to communicate here. Now, this is salvation's three way. You can call it, or you can call it Romans way, or Romans way of, road. A uh, Romans road, or salvation based on Apostle Paul's letter to to Romans, as it 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 clearly says uh, who we are, and what we have done, and what we need to be doing in order uh, to. Uh, to earn our salvation or to be saved. And <clears throat> this is all based on, I hope you can see it, and you can see it so well that you can write maybe down, 
So Romans 3.23 saying that everyone has sinned and there's no exceptions. Sometimes we believe that everybody else is a sinner, but I am not the, I'm the only sinless person in the world, in my family. But that is not true because my friend, I hate to say <laughs> that you are a sinner as much as everybody else. And it don't matter if you're a decent person, good person or not good person, we all sinners without Christ. We have sinned, we are sinners. <clears throat> so, and then Romans 6.23 says that the penalty of that, that we are sinners, is death. Romans 6, 23. Mm -hmm. You write it down and you check it out. And then Romans 5, 8 says that Jesus Christ died for our sin. And this is what Paul is saying to us again here. That Jesus took our penalty on him. Mm -hmm. He died on the cross because of our sins. He didn't sin. He was sinless. Sinless. But uh, it was because of our sins he died for. So Jesus Christ died for our, our sin. Okay? Uh, and that means that Romans 10, 8 through 10, it says, To be forgiven from all our sins, for our sins, we must believe and confess that Jesus Christ is the is the salvation uh, Jesus Christ is the Lord and salvation came through Jesus only all alone and that is Romans 10 8 to 10 so Romans wrote mm -hmm. Romans way of salvation or however you want to call it it is based on what uh, Apostle Paul teaches here again this morning or this noon time here mm -hmm. okay good Let's let's go ahead and read uh, uh, from twelve, verse twelve to um, I think the seventeen. Okay. Romans five, verse twelve. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given. But it was not counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break. Still, everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now, Adam is a symbol, a representation of Christ who was yet to come. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness mm -hmm. to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Okay, thank you for good reading. Uh, that's a mouthful too. That's, that's Lots and lots in there. That's a deep, that's a deep thing. I think this 12th verse, uh, Mary, uh, uh, since we are dealing with this virus, it's, it's, it's using a little bit of imagination here, although sin is much deeper problem than viruses. Virus is bad enough, but uh, sin, sin is much deeper. But there's some, some similarities out there because uh, yeah. uh, like sin is like a deadly virus, worse than that, but it's like a, it can spread out. Mm -hmm. uh, easily and it's very contagious it's very contagious uh, even if that if you don't get uh, exposed by somebody you expose yourself mm -hmm. yeah. so that's the biggest it's an interesting thing. illustration of yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah so it's it's with you it goes with you so you witness when you believe and you are certain that somebody has sinned 
it's something that you believe in. That's a sin. And you say, hoo, hoo, wow, that was, that was a horrible thing. And you walk away and you believe you are free, but start thinking about it. You, you, you ain't free, like we say here in Kentucky. So uh, it, it go, it walk, the sin walks with you, along with you, one way or another. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, but here's, here's again, Mary, kind of what you hear people saying many times, and it is, um, it is, there's reason to ask, it's saying that, how can we be declared guilty by somebody's sin who lived thousands of years before me? Mm-hmm. How can we be declared? Uh, I wasn't part of his problems or his sins. Uh, many feel it is not fair, actually, God, that I have been doomed uh, by by the sins of somebody else who mm-hmm. lived thousands of years before. Mm-hmm. So where is fairness with this? Right. Where is it? But when you think about it, uh, you can assimilate to Adam pretty well because sin walks with you. Sin is with you. It, it, it is not just a matter of Adam sinning, but because Adam did sin, you are sinning too. Mm-hmm. You are, you are, you, you are uh, sinful as well. So we have the same sinful nature than, uh, and prone to rebel against God than Adam had. Mm-hmm. To be disobedient. It is like an inbuilt in you, and it, it, you can't help it. What's a little child? That's a it's a traditional example. What's a little child when when he learned to walk, or he he learned he 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 becomes a little bit more personal. You start seeing those <laughs> unfortunate things that you know will connect him very deeply with the human race. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Disobedience, and of course. And we love them anyway, mm-hmm. even they hit their foot a little bit on the floor. We, we love them. So does God loves us, yeah. love us. So we are part of this sinful generation, friends. We can, we can help it and we are judged uh, for the sins we commit. Uh, Romans says <clears throat> the penalty of our sins is death. So I know it doesn't sound so great, but that's just the reality. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a reality check right there. So this is what we what we are dealing with. So the first Adam that the Paul is using this metaphor here, and it is not metaphor, but it's it's connecting with the first human being and then Christ, uh, who was born here as a full human and full di- divine. Mm-hmm. Not 50% divine and 50% right, human, right. but 100% human and 100% divine. One right. of the mysteries that we can't really explain, can, but can, it, is, can but not it is true. Comprehend it all, all that well all the time and deep enough, you do are right. Mm-hmm. But I have heard even from the pulpit, referring to Jesus, and look at this uh, God's chosen who was 50% man and 50% uh, divine and makes it 100%. Mm-hmm. And then I was about to say, it, okay, 100% who? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, 100% human and 100% divine. Fully. Okay. Mm-hmm. That is who our Savior is. Now, Adam, who was a gift, was a God's creation, first human being, mm-hmm. uh, to, to create it, to live uh, in God's presence all the time, mm-hmm. and to love God and obey God, and then... Eve came into picture, and this first couple were <coughs> sinless, and they were living uh, in God's presence. But then we all know what happened, and then we are dealing with it. Sin came in the world. So it took a second Adam, what is the example Paul is using, second Adam, which is referring to Jesus Christ, who had to be born as a, as a fully human to deal with our sins and, mm-hmm. and human uh, failures. So he had to come and be born here. Coming through like every human being will come through into this world Mm -hmm. by birth. Mm -hmm. And then he died for us on the cross because the penalty of sin is dead. So he had to die for us on the cross. Mm -hmm. 
with an exception that remember going back to uh, the last moments on Calvary. Now, the dead couldn't take his life, but he gave it voluntarily. Yes. Yeah. He surrendered his life uh, to God's hand. Mm -hmm. So that's proof that there is, he went through the same way that every human being will go through by coming into this world, by, by birth, mm -hmm. and then leaving this world by dying. Yes. So if you are living today, sad news is you are, you are going to die one day. Mm -hmm. We're all going to die. Like Jesus died for our sins on the cross. But then, uh, we can do on our own. Jesus rose again. Mm -hmm. he, he won the victory over death by rising from the dead. And that was the moment that he bought the victory mm -hmm. for us all yes. through his death. So this is why Paul is referring uh, Adam being the first Adam and first human being and then Jesus being the second Adam. Mm -hmm. So the first Adam, Mary was the, was the failure and the second Adam came to fix that was the, for was us. The savior. Mm -hmm. savior. Mm -hmm. First was failure and the second was savior. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful way to say it. So this is what Paul is saying to us here. Yeah. Wow. This is this is a uh, this is deep stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Doctor Al, we have fifty more minutes left. If you're doing sixty minutes, you have fourteen minutes left. Okay. Fourteen. Okay. We have still a little bit time. Okay. So clear in this, saying that how um, how how precious first Adam and Eve were in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality was, like Paul says, for first Adam, for Adam's sin led to condemnation. But God's free gift leads to our being made right with God. Even though we were guilty, we are guilty of many sins. So Jesus came to save us, to fix what was broken. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a, that's a very, very powerful thing here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's continue our reading, and then we have uh, only a few verses left okay. here, from 18 to 21. I guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes, that's a... That's a clear and very systematic way to say mm -hmm. uh, to us that what were the walks of God to bring us in, what were the actions of God to bring us in. Yes, Adam's one thing brings condemnation for everyone, without exceptions, we know, for everyone. And, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God, a new life for everyone as well. So Jesus came to fix it and to save it, uh, what was broken, and it was our relationship with God, mm -hmm. which is actually what sin causes Mary. Sometimes we talk about uh, certain consequences on sins and things related, you know, right. stealing and lying and, and living that life or whatever. Many times we are talking about irrelational things, but then we don't really look into the roots of, of the sin too often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So which is the separation, all the way separation from God. From God. Mm -hmm. And that was the biggest thing. So you can be a decent person, a good person, 
and you can be t you can still be a greatest sinner in the world because you are separated from God. Mm -hmm. And only one person who can fix it is Jesus Christ. That's right. To build that bridge mm -hmm. by his righteousness, not our righteousness, by his righteousness, to build that bridge between him. That's right. Between God and, and us. And that is what salvation is all about. Yeah. That is what salvation is all about. There's one thing that Paul is talking and as he many times Mary talks about what was the purpose of law? What is the purpose of law? Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of free gift uh, by faith in Jesus Christ and all that? And, and did God gave his uh, perfect law for us uh, uh, to save us from our sins? Uh, or what was the meaning of, of the law? Actually, here in verse 20 friends, it's gone very clear mm -hmm. to us. I think we kind of touched it a little bit last a little time. Bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful we are, how they were. Mm -hmm. But as people sin more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So uh, uh, the law actually was given to us to sow how much we fall sore from God's righteousness. Yeah. So there is no really name for sins before law was given. Yet people die from their sins already. Mm -hmm. Like Adam and Eve. Yeah. They didn't live forever because they, they, they were sinners. They needed, they needed forgiveness and salvation as well. But so the, the, the sin, the existence, the reality of sin was there before law was given. Mm -hmm. People dying from their sins. So uh, law is good and perfect, but the purpose of law is to show how very sinners we are. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is, it is very healthy, let me say this. This is why we teach about Ten Commandments. We teach about the Old Testament. Uh, that is a that is a message of God's perfect law and how imperfect we are in the eyes of God's law, how much sinners we are. Otherwise, we will know it. We will know it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I don't know how blessed people will be if your pastor will be preaching on, on, on law Sunday after Sunday and all about God's law because it is just a pushing you. It will corner you more and more will we you will kind of condemn you more and more here is where you fall sword here is where you where you fall sword okay you believe you're doing pretty good maybe maybe so and so but listen to this <laughs> so it puts us in the corner Mary yeah that is what God's perfect law does for us and then we start wondering and praying and 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 sometimes even yelling and screaming, who can help me mm -hmm. from this sinful uh, body like Paul was referring one yes. of his saying. Yes. Who can help me from this? I, I am, I try to do, I try to make it, I try to be perfect, I try to obey, I try to do all I can as a human being, yet I find myself being a great sinner in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's the meaning and purpose of the law. So law is pushing you toward Christ, okay? Yeah. Cause law has, is, yes, because he is the answer to that question. Yeah. Who can help me? Yes. Only Jesus. Only Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's a, that's a wonderful opportunity for us sinners, including us all. So it says, as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, uh, what can we say, Mary? Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. God's mm -hmm. grace is wonderful and needed and big. And it may be only option for us as it is, but it's a wonderful option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you are one good one, you don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, deep, deep, deep thing. Uh, 
deep thing um, again, and, and I wish you enjoy your uh, readings, mm -hmm. reading the Apostle Paul's letter to Romans, and um, and uh, continue reading. Next time, I guess we will be dealing with chapter six. Chapter six, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And I keep on repeating myself. There's only one way to learn what Bible says. It is by reading. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, you can listen to it too, but reading is a good way. You can pause, you can pray, you can think about it, mm -hmm. you, can, you can wonder what this is all about. Sometimes you have to put things on hold mm -hmm. and you, you don't have no answers or nothing. Right. This book is often um, one that you can go away from thinking, Boy, I'm not sure I understand all of that, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. God, the Holy Spirit will plant what what you need to know at that yes. moment. Yeah. yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, if you read it prayerfully and thoughtfully mm -hmm. and systematically, and actually, Bible reading, Mary, should be a devotional. Yes. Mm -hmm. And not just in, informational, which is obviously part of it, but uh, spiritual formative, spiritual formational, right. so that we believe that this is what I'm taking in will change my life, mm -hmm. will shape me and transform me. Yes. Okay, anything else? Any wisdom tooth? <laughs> Not at this point. Yeah, well, thank you, friends, for being with us today uh, as we've been, we've been uh, trying to go through this fifth chapter and uh, we love to have you again, of course. Pray for us, pray for us all, pray for our nation, pray for our, our communities, uh, pray for those who are struggling, maybe more than you are at this point, uh, because prayer, prayers are so very important uh, for us all. I'm going to ask Mary to please close this by a, a beautiful prayer, and then we go from there. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit helping us to understand and uh, enlighten us as we read. We also thank you, Father, for your grace. We thank you for the gift of faith that you give to us, and we ask that you would continue to teach us more and more. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And God bless you, friends. See you next time. Keep on reading.